Hi, my name is Gerhard Schwartner and welcome to Selling Power TV. I'm very excited because we have as our guest today, Frank Suspides. He is professor at Harvard University, at Harvard Business School. And he has a new book called Sales Management That Works by Harvard Business Review Press. Welcome, Frank. Thank you, Gerhard. It's an absolute pleasure to be with you and with Selling Power. So, Frank, how do you define sales leadership? Well, I start with leadership. And for me, leadership is fundamentally about getting things done through others, through other people. That's, that's sort of the core aspect of right. leadership. And it's especially important in sales. Most sales managers, most sales leaders began as individual contributors. The transition from individual contributor to someone who has to get things done through others is difficult in any function, but it's especially important and difficult in sales because you usually still have selling responsibilities along with the management and leadership responsibilities. So how would you describe the, the key factors uh, that help sales leaders create consistent success? It's difficult in business to get good things done for any sustained period of time without a coherent business strategy. Basically, I think there are three levers that any sales leader has available to him to help execute that strategy and get consistent performance. One, and always the most important, is people. Who do we hire? How do we train them? How do we deploy them? Etc. The second lever, lever is performance management systems. Uh, how do we pay people? What are the incentives? Uh, do we take performance reviews seriously? And then the third element is really about sales in the context of the wider organization and organizational culture. What are the interactions, if any, between sales and other functions? Where do we get our sales leaders from and so forth? Do you believe that sales leadership is more of an art or more of a science? Or is it both? And if so, uh, to what percentage? It is for me much more of an art than a science. And I say that uh, for a couple of reasons. We use the word science very loosely and uh, sloppily. By science, I mean that if we do X, we're going to get Y. That is not the way business works. And it's, it's especially not the way sales works. There are very, very few opportunities in any business to do anything approaching a controlled variable experiment the way we do in science. And in sales in particular, the most important thing about selling is the buyer who buys, why, and how. That's always changing, and the changes are largely outside of the control of the seller and the selling organization. That doesn't mean that it's a gut instinct art. It doesn't mean that data is not very, very important. But if it comes to art or science, for me, this is very, very much an art, a craft. And uh, I don't think it's anywhere near what I would call a science. For some people, it's easier to develop sales leaders um, uh, from the people side, and it's much more challenging to integrate technology in their sales operation. Yeah. So what is your advice for sales leaders? Understand buying in your target market as it exists today. Secondly, how does what I call the customer conversion dynamic work in our business? In other words, what do we know about the cause and effect links from the time we do lead generation to the time we do or don't close a sale? In which of those areas are our salespeople important? And in which of those areas is marketing important or service? And then the third element, and I think this is ultimately where you've got to be in order to really use technology and processes effectively, given all of that, what are the key sales tasks? And by key sales tasks, I mean, what are the activities at which our salespeople have to be very, very good at 
versus those things that they just have to be good enough, or in fact, they shouldn't be doing at all. Then I think we ask ourselves, what are the relevant processes and technologies for supporting and executing those key sales tasks? Right. And I think there's an additional function uh, of a sales leader that we haven't mentioned yet is uh, to become an ambassador within the organization so that there are no silos between sales, marketing, service, and manufacturing. That's what the changes in buying driven by data and technology are doing. This is not a digital eats physical world, but it is clearly by the third decade of the 21st century, an omni-channel buying world. Prospects and customers are online and offline at multiple times throughout their buying journeys. This doesn't mean sales is disintermediated. That's the data just does not support those uh, generalizations, but it is a big deal for what it means to be a salesperson and especially a sales leader. Among other things, sales is increasingly involved in cross-functional activities. Functions develop their standard operating procedures, but increasingly the organization, because of technology, is more transparent to the customer. They can touch different parts. And when they have an issue, 80 plus percent of the time, the customer calls the person who sold them the product or service. Right. That's increasingly a very important part of selling. So reaching out to those other functions, as you pointed out, is a core activity for many sales leaders. And let's be honest, many sales leaders don't like to do that. So the sales person that gets promoted to sales manager and then sales leader, they need to move from uh, being a disciplined uh, specialist to being a m even more disciplined generalist. Yes, I, I think that's very, very well put. Well, I recommend that everybody head over to Amazon.com, uh, get uh, Frank's book, Sales Management That Works. Frank, thank you so much for your time. Gerhard, thank you. I really appreciate it.